In these problems, we are graphing lines, linear equations, that are in the form of y equals mx plus b. So some number multiplied by x, and then some other number here. So here we've got 2 multiplied by x, and we've got a negative 7. This is also called slope-intercept form, and I'll show you why in a little bit. Um, I'm going to show you two different ways to go about graphing lines uh, like this. The first way is the one we've been using already, and that is just make a chart. Put x on one side, y on the other side, pick a value for x, plug it in the equation, and then crunch out the number, find out what y equals. If we were to do that here, let's say I put in 2 for x. It would be 2 times 2, that would be 4, and then 4 minus 7 would be negative 3. All right, and let's put in another value here. Let's put in um, 4. So 2 times 4 is 8, minus 7 is a positive 1. And let's just do one more. So 2 times 5 is 10, minus 7 would be 3. So now we've got three points. We can really uh, double check our work here. Let's plot these. 2 on the x is negative 3 on the y. And 4 on the x is 1. And then 5 on the x is 3. All right, so it looks like they're all lining up. We can draw the line in, in now. All right, so there is our line, y equals 2x minus 7. I just chose some values for x, and I did the math here. I multiplied them by 2, and I subtracted 7 to find the y. So that's one way to handle these. There is another way, and you might think of it as a shortcut. Whoops. There we go. So I mentioned this is called slope-intercept form. In this form, whatever number here is multiplied by the x is the slope, and whatever uh, number comes after that that's not multiplied by the x is what we call the y-intercept. In this case, we have a negative 3 for our y-intercept. What that means is on the y-axis, this line will cross at the point negative 3, where y equals negative 3. So we've got one point already just by looking at the equation. And then you can get another point or two just by applying the slope. And for this, we have to understand what slope is. The number that's multiplied by x, that's our slope. In this case, it's a negative 3. And what we want to do is think of slope as a fraction of the vertical change over the horizontal change, or the rise over the run. But negative 3 is not a fraction. Well, luckily for us, we can write any number as a fraction by just putting it over 1. So this is negative 3 over 1. So this is our rise here, and this is our run. What rise mean, means is how many spaces it goes up, and what run means is how many spaces it goes over to the right. We've got a negative number for rise, so that means it goes up a negative 3, which is down 3. So negative means down in this case. So if I start right here, I could count down from our point we already plotted. I could count down 3 and over 1. 1, 2, 3, and over 1. And I would get another point. I could also do the backwards of that. I could go to the left and up 3, so a left 1 and up 3, and get another point. So. From point to point here, we go down 3 over 1, down 3 over 1. And then we have enough points we can draw our line. So let's do that. And there is our line. So if you find that to be a shortcut and you've got a formula, an equation in this slope-intercept form, you can know that this number right here is your y-intercept, and then you can use the slope to plot some other points. So that is how to graph a line that's in slope-intercept form.